What's up, everybody? Mr. Steve here. I'm using the Claude AI tied in with the MCP add-on. There's a backend you have to do. Uh, you have to do a PFP install for UV and a few other things I'll show you. I also had a problem. I kept getting this error right here when I was trying to do it. Nothing would connect. Uh, and I know there's some other people running into this. So if it's not a smooth install, I should be able to handle that for you guys in this tutorial. So we'll go over using this live in Blender. Well, technically not live, but I'm just going to run this right now. Tell it to create a light that is blue. Switch to cycles and uh, turn on scene lights. So you have to allow for this chat. Boom. I'll allow for this time and it should go through and write this in and do this in Blender for us. We've got something happened here. Let's see what happened in Blender. I got a, a shtick, apparently. Uh, da, 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 da. Did not switch me to cycles, but let's look and see if it did anything at all. Uh, oh, it's still working, still working. So it's trying to do some things. It's probably gonna prompt me again. So this is kind of like a new thing. And don't worry, we're gonna jump into the, the how-to tutorial here in just a minute. But just kind of running over my very first time using this. Uh, it's a little tedious, no question. Uh, this is nowhere near what it's going to need to be to take over, you know, Blender 3D. Oh, wow, look at that. It switched us over um, into Cycles. So it's creating code for each instance of my request. And then I have to approve it. So now it should be putting a light in the scene and turning it blue. And Z axis, line, it's putting a line, mesh line. That's fine, I guess. It's like it actually changed a couple of settings or it put me okay it put me in edit mode that would be why that's going crazy all right what is this is this a light <laughs> let's let's check this out um it's an emission it's a blue emission and what is that a single it's a single line with an emission the shader editor as i'm kind of curious here what the heck this thing did all right let go do this, it's got a BSDF and a ma secondary material output. That's not going to work. So if we lose that, so that doesn't really work for uh, the purpose here. So it's just one vert, guys, but let's pull this bad boy out and like see what we can do with it. I'm going to um, grab this and extrude it out and crying out loud i think we could uh, grab this whole thing come on a for all do the thing and let's scale this down and let's bring this down okay so got to be way more specific just make a light is not going to be enough origin is funky origin geometry okay cool whatever so let's go back over to cycles and honest to goodness guys that actually worked uh, so this is going to be an interesting thing. There's going to be a little bit of testing. And if you don't know Blender and you don't know the interface and you don't understand modeling, lighting, texturing, shading, things like that, this is going to be very difficult for you to figure out. You cannot just jump in and use um, this type of AI system you know, fluently. It's not going to happen. Not yet. But this is good. Let's go on a journey and I'll show you how to install this. Now, over here at the GitHub, I'll provide you guys this link. Very easy to find. I just Googled it real quick. Uh, what you want to do is download this Pi file. It's the biggest thing you're going to need. If you want the rest of this, you can just click Code and Download Zip, and that'll grab everything. You're going to need to do a few different things. Make sure you read the integration files here. It's going to tell you how the uh, Blender model context protocol is going to work and how it's going to go in. So first off, you need Blender 3.0 or higher. You need Python 3.10 or newer. It's pretty easy to do if you're in Blender 3.6 or higher, which you should be anyways. Um, and then we're going to be able to uh, put a UV package on here, which is going to make all this work as well. Now, if we just scroll down, we'll see this little block of code right here. This is what you're going to need for your desktop integration. So let's go ahead and just copy this real quick and then slide back over to the desktop. Now that we're back over here at the desktop, let's jump up and configure this. Let's go to File, let's go down to Settings. And we want to switch this to developer and let's edit the config file. Now, what we're going to need to do here is find the JSON file so that we can update it. And good news, it's already selected for us. So you just have to double click it. And if you do not have something like PyCharm 
or Visual Studio. You're going to need to get that. That way you can update the Py file itself, the Python. Uh, and once you do that and you've copied this, you just come over here. You can hit Control A and then Control V, dump that in, and then make sure to save this. Now, just as a quick little explanation for everybody, we got to install UV next. And what is that? It's a fast Python package manager. Now go ahead and open another instance of Google and let's type in install UV and hit enter. When that happens, you wanna to go to next gen Python tooling, go ahead and click on that. And right here under the PowerShell, you're gonna to wanna to grab this. There should be a little copy symbol that pops up. Go ahead and copy that right there. Now what we wanna do is come back over here to the PowerShell. This would be something we can type in if the, you didn't have the UV. So just control V that in and hit enter. I'm not going to do it because I already did, but you'll see a nice little install setup. Now, if that does not work, uh, what I want you to do is go ahead and type in PIP install UV. And when you click enter on that, it'll say, hey, requirement already satisfied. So you should be good there. If not, repeat those steps a couple times. You may have to close everything out. I know for a fact, if you come down here to the task bar, the mini app bar and right click, it'll say for uh, this one quit. So go ahead and quit that and totally remove everything. Sometimes you got to restart the PC just as a little hint. It took me three restarts and three times of closing this out. And uh, then this was the trick right here. This fixed it up. Now that I've got this set up again, I'm going to reopen my cloud and you can do a split screen. This just makes it a whole lot easier. So you don't have to have uh, screens flipping back and forth. Now, if you don't have the little tools right here, there's going to be a problem, but you do have to start this MCP server. And then sometimes if you start this and then open Claude, that will work. Uh, just so figure that out on your end. And I think that should help you guys get to this point. So now when you come in here, you'll say, I've got these tools. What are the tools? I can create objects. Here's a list. I can delete objects. Here's a list. Download from Polyhaven. Here's a list and so on. So just one last quick things and then I'll leave you guys to it. And we will just say, let's create five cubes in a row at scale one and texture each one a different color and go ahead and hit enter and I did kind of typo there but it's AI so that's pretty smart it's gonna know you know that we're human and we don't get things right a lot so it's pretty programmed for that just make sure to continue to click allow for this chat and it will do the thing give it a second and then it will uh, go to the next one and make sure that you allow for each one uh, you can click allow once or allow for this chat Let's see, run object from Blender, blah, blah, blah. It's going to tell me the code. That's fine. You could deny it if you don't want. If you think the code is not good, if you understand Python and scripting and you see something that could crash Blender, definitely take a look at the code first. But for beginners who are just dumping cubes and random things in the scene and lighting, this should be pretty easy. Now we're at the part where it's going to do apply different color materials to each cube. It's going to say red, blue, green, yellow, purple, blah, blah, blah. Let's go ahead and, and it didn't actually create those cubes. So I clicked the retry button down here. So I'll just let it run through it again one more time. And it's saying I could not connect to Blender. So I just hit stop here and I'll restart this server give it a second and then click retry with no changes. Now it looks like it's actually working. This is really cool. They're putting them in a row and building them up for us. This is nice. So I didn't tell it to switch over to dev mode, uh, look dev. So we'll do that in just a second. Once it's finished, I gotta make sure it's gonna apply all those materials. Oh, it switched to, it switched over. So this is good. Uh, still generating. Now it's doing the green material. That's cool. I know this may be a little bit long, but I'm just going to show this anyways because it's important to see the entire process and the little troubleshooting things that I have to do to make it work. Uh, generally speaking, this is pretty easy. You could technically 
just jump in as a newbie and start doing some stuff once you get the install in. But it's very, very advised to take some beginner uh, to advanced tutorials and get familiar with Blender and the interface. Now I've had to restart this a couple times and what I'm finding out is that if you go ahead and stop this, close the Claude app, definitely close it down here, restart the add-on first, then open Claude. Uh, it's working a heck of a lot smoother. This is working out a lot nicer. So go ahead and do it that way. I think that's gonna end up being the best approach for debugging and making sure you keep connected. Otherwise, it's just gonna have in and out connection errors. Just keep clicking allow for these uh, and then you'll have your scene whenever it's done. See, this is working so much more seamless. I'm kind of learning a couple things as I go here and try to teach this to you guys and make this the quickest video probably ever done. And it's just about done. Here we go, we got one more, probably have to say okay. And I don't interact the mouse, like I'm not interacting with this environment right now. Look at that, so that's good. That's the exact request and I think we're uh, looking pretty good now. Thanks for watching guys, smash that subscribe, like if you want, jump in. I've also got a Patreon, I've got a Blender, I've uh, got a Gumroad and a number of different things for add-ons and things to keep you guys going. I got the BV4 bevel joints add-on, which is really cool. This will definitely take uh, two objects, whatever you want to do uh, as far as joining things seamlessly in Blender. And then of course you can revert that. Hey, I didn't really want that there. Let's move it over here. Go ahead and join it there and test it out. And it makes a, a nice manifold cut into the geo for you. And then after that, you uh, if you're in different like a uh, Blender 4.3 and up, you'll have some really neat controls here for adding in uh, bevels, it'll already activate the edge for you and some other really cool things. I've got 25% off discount on these add-ons. Go check it out and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.